guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tristan for those that are new here. As you could have seen from today's title, I'm going to be talking about managing a long distance small business or managing a business that is long distance and it's a small business, yes? The reason why I'm emphasizing from, for small businesses is because larger organizations obviously would not be able to put these things that I've said into practice, yeah? Because they're larger, there's more risk involved and all that. So if you'd like to know more about this topic, definitely keep watching. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I've gotten a couple of requests from people, especially my Instagram followers, saying that, oh, Tosin, you're in the UK, I bought something from your company before in Nigeria, and everything went so smoothly, how do you do it, how do you run it remotely? And also, on my previous video of I'm back, that video I made, I'll put a link somewhere in this video so you can see, someone also commented below saying, how do you manage a long distance business? and they wanted a video in-depth video so i don't know how in-depth this video would be but everything i'm going to share in this video obviously is going to be what has worked for me i don't know if this may be applicable to your business but i think the points should be able to i have brainstormed a couple of points actually i wrote them down so that when i'm making this video i have most of my points you know more articulately yeah so the first thing that I have on my notes is ensure that your business is a business that can be run remotely. Now, if you're a makeup artist, it's, it's a business that you literally need to be on the ground to do. Obviously, everything I say in this video would not be able to work, except that you have people that you've trained that can replicate your own um, business style or your own makeup way or how you do anything that you do physically with your hands. For example, let me say you're a baker, you've already trained other bakers as well, then this can work. So ensure that as I'm speaking to you, evaluate your business, look at your business activities. What do I do? Are you a fashion designer? It may not be able to work if you're a fashion designer because you may need to literally on ground to, you know, cut fabric, draw designs, correct your tailors and whatnot. So look at your business and see if it's a business that you'll be able to run remotely. Just eliminate yourself from the business and see would my business still survive? yeah so that's the first question so the next thing we're going to talk about is processes now a business is made up of business activities and processes when i was living in nigeria one of the things that i did was i looked at my business and i said you know what you're saying what are some of the processes that you guys carry out every day or that we as a business we carry out every day that it could operate without me being there so one of them was receiving phone calls and i thought to myself you know how when you own a business in court you already have a way you like to talk to your customers and say hello good morning welcome to xyz company my name is xyz how may i help you today and i just felt like ah, no one can do it as excellent as i can da, 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 da. but that was a lie because i just i learned very early on that you know excellence is being able to or greatness is being able to replicate your excellence in other people that's really what greatness is so i just thought you know why don't i get a staff obviously i had someone i was working with me before but i didn't really let her do those parts of the business so i just thought you know why not let me train her in such a way that even when she's speaking on the phone even i'll be like all right like who is this who is this nice you know customer service agent and all that so i spent a huge amount of time doing trainings and not just verbal trainings we wrote tests i ensure that they wrote tests I had two people working for me. I ensured that they wrote tests, they practiced, I watched them receive phone calls. When they were done with the phone calls, I gave them feedback, you know, till they became part and parcel of them. Even sometimes when one of my staff, when she received phone calls, I'll be like, you savvy work, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, so I ensure that I was able to replicate that level of excellence that I required in myself or that I required in staff into them basically so i did that that's one of our processes another thing that i thought was the online um sale really now we have a physical store now but we didn't always have a physical store what we had was just an online platform and a stock room and i just felt you know what now obviously every 90 percent of businesses nowadays have a website if you do not have a website you're running a retail business and you want to move abroad you're just shooting yourself in the foot like you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Your brain can only take so much. Excel sheets can only take so much. Your notepad can only take so much. Instagram can crash. Let me say that again. Instagram can crash. As at this morning, today's the 3rd of October, Instagram actually had a glitch and was down for a few minutes. So Instagram can crash. You cannot, you cannot, you know, have your customer phone numbers, their details, everything just on Instagram. You know what I mean? So a web website will help where you can actually save your customer's portfolio there, your frequent customers, your products, your prices, so that all the calling of the store to say, oh, how much is it? 
how can I order? Every person that can read can actually just go to the website to the websites to place the orders. So that's one of the processes. I try to ensure that all our orders were done online. I know that a lot of people will be like, but why Nigeria? Some people still prefer, you know, DM, WhatsApp. We totally scrapped WhatsApp shopping because I couldn't guarantee that I would always be on the WhatsApp and I didn't want my staff. I wanted to be able to monitor um, the kind of conversations text-wise that my staff was having. So what I did was when I first moved here, I think that was last year, what I did was I ensured that my WhatsApp was on my computer. So the star phone was in Nigeria, but I was able to install WhatsApp on my computer using, I think, Bluestack, if I remember that's name of the software. For MacBook, I don't know about any other um, computer or operating system for iOS. That's what I did for my laptop. And I put that up and that really helped, you know, with WhatsApp for business, you're able to, you know, have like um quick replies you're able to maybe when someone says hello you already have like a text message saying well thank you for contacting us today um to, to check our delivery rates click here all our processes we ensure that they were as digital as possible there were literally no like um text base or except for stock taking which really helps because uh, i'm gonna go into that much later because that's a bit extensive obviously people have issues like um What's it called? What about pilfering? What if your staff steals? How would you manage stock? Trust me, I've done this for literally almost a year now and it works. Like, it actually works. You need to just know how much stock you have. Ensure that every online order or every order that is done verbally on WhatsApp or any of the other of your sale platforms, you enter it on your website as well so that the stock can tally. Any sale made in the physical store, you ensure that it's also updated on the back end. Now, there's a lot of digital processes. It's not, I'm not going to just say, oh, at the end of this video, you'll be able to implement all these things. But at the end of this video, you can actually now start typing out what gadgets you need to buy, what software you need to buy, if you need to get a tilling system in your store, if you need to teach your, your, your staff how to actually use the website so that when someone buys from the store or if you have a physical store, they can just go on the website and place the order like they are the customer when the customer leaves. Do you understand? Or at the end of each day, they, they put in all the sale that has been made on the computer so that it automatically updates the stock levels. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, obviously, is manpower. Now, this is like, this is the backbone of your business. If you're going to move out of Nigeria and you're going to be running your, your company, you need staff. You need staff. I'm not going to lie to you. Your parents can only do so much. Your siblings can only do so much. You want someone that, or you want to work with people that there's no C finish. Now, part of my choice of words, C finish means that someone that, oh, there's no familiarity. There's not too much, oh, you're my sister. Auntie, I don't feel like coming to work again. No, you need people that they are accountable. They're on your payroll. You are paying them. You can scold them. You can reprimand them fairly and you will not feel guilty. You won't be emotionally blackmailed. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So obviously with recruitment of staff, that's another video entirely on how to recruit staff for a small business. But I'm going to just say a few things that I know can help. When you're recruiting, recruit someone that you know, that you can sell your vision to easily and they get it. Like the, you can sell the vision of your business, they understand it, you ask them questions. Now I find that people only treat your business the way you treat it. So for example, you have a business, you always go late to your store, you never come, sometimes you go, sometimes you don't go. Why would you think your staff will have a level of urgency to come to work? After all, madame is not going to be there anyway. Or let me say, you, when you, the way you talk to your customers on the phone, you're like, I beg, if you're going to buy, buy, if you're not going to buy, please be going. The day when your, your staff encounters a rude customer, she's obviously going to do, ma, you know what I mean? But when she sees that every customer you give, you, you greet them with salutations, ever small or old, you say sir, you say ma, you are courteous, you're very polite to them, you care about the goods they are buying, you care about the after sale. It's only a matter of that, because see, and people love virtues, like it's so easy to pass on good skills, because people like excellence, they wonder how someone can be so robotic you know for lack of a better word they wonder how somebody can be so excellent like how come it comes so natural to you to be polite to people people want to replicate good deeds do you understand what i'm saying so you want to ensure that you recruit staff that you know they're passionate about your business and obviously even in the interview process a lot of people lie but that's why obviously this is a christian channel you obviously want to work with discernment as well. When I went to Lagos, I needed to recruit another staff and I had an interview with a couple of people and my spirits were just, not like they did not, you know, they didn't ace the interview, but I was just very, nah, there's just something, you know? When you're recruiting people, you recruit someone that you you know that you have enough time to train. A lot of problems, one of the biggest problems with small business owners is that they always leave things to chances. Okay, so you say, 
oh, my staff is always wearing rubbish to work when i say rubbish now she's always indecently dressed you don't want them to wear slippers but then you don't have a spelt out dress code for your business they need to know from day one that they cannot wear flip-flops to work they need to know from day one that they cannot wear evening gowns they need to know from day one that they can only wear traditional attires on friday they need to know that they need to wear the company uniform a specific day a week these are things that i do in my business so that's why it's coming off the top of my head like that so you know you have to actually spell out things spell out your expectations what is your vision for the business like if you don't have a clear picture of how you want your business to be perceived obviously anything is going to happen so that when you're not there they still maintain that certain level of excellence and even if they don't they can be held accountable because you set out metrics for them to follow do you get what i mean so next thing you need to also em employ staff that you know that they function very well without being micromanaged and that now besides it being a personal skill because obviously some people work better on their own while some people work better when you literally on their necks we don't want people like that you don't want someone that when you're abroad you won't have peace of mind every means you have to be texting them you have to be calling them and in, in as much as the personal skill is required from the staff you also need to be someone that you actually train yourself to be able to delegate responsibility do you know that hmm, sometimes as a business owner you are very possessive you get so i want to see i want to know what's going on if you if you can literally like you know go into the bodies of your staff to see how they think you want to that but for your business to function very well for you to have peace of mind while you are abroad you need to learn to delegate responsibility as i said previously look how your process is what can i outsource what can I delegate to my staff? What can I do effectively that would not be a burden to me? Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why you need to ensure that you recruit people that you do very well without being micromanaged. You need to be able to have, like, so let's say you are the one that takes the stock all the time. And there's a particular way you take the stock. When you write the, the name of the item, the quantity, the color left, um, the colors left, uh, maybe the stock ID. Don't just let that be on your computer and only you have access to it. If you don't want your staff to have access to your back end so they won't be able to change stock, you buy a book. You buy a book, you roll out, you, you give them the format, product ID, name, quantity left, location last delivered to, whatever it is that suits your business and ensure that they feel that they now have that sense of responsibility. So they know that at the end of each day, they must do a stock report. They must do a sale report and they must let me say give you feedback on anything that the customer said in the shop and also maybe you have like a feedback form in your store they must let you know what what feedback that the customers give so ensure that you put things in place that allows you to be able to delegate responsibility and not just you is in solely in charge of that another very important you know what would i say tip is to create a very good relationship with your stakeholders now by stakeholders i mean your staff your logistics partners your hr company your bank your account officers your friends your family um and your customers your maybe say your um frequent customers you know what i mean and just and let me tell you something i've been here for since i moved last year i've been going back and forth and since i've been here the longest time i've been here was six months at a stretch without going to nigeria and i found out that a lot of days maybe where there was there could have been a risk or something or there could have been a plight that the risk was averted was because of the relationship i had with the stakeholders so for example let me say you need an urgent delivery done because you already have the numbers of all the delivery companies in your area it's just a text away it's just a call away and not just you having that number when you're leaving you give your staff like a spreadsheet with the numbers of your stakeholders the numbers the contact details and the services that they render i'm telling you what i do firsthand i'm not telling you something i read in a textbook i'm telling you what i do we literally have a document in our office that each person so starting from electrician the pos my pos is the um payment terminal like point of sale um, terminal my account officer's number the printer's number the logistics company's numbers past staff just in case they need to maybe um find out any information my friends that work around my own office area our hr companies everything is written down so in case they need to solve a problem let me say they have an electrical electrical problem they won't be texting me saying madam the blow the the bulb blew today they just they know to take from the sundry expenses from the business and they call the electrician so i'm not bothered with those minute information but when i get the report from the day i see that they took out 500 naira to buy a new bulb or they took out 1005 to buy a cable 
do you, are you guys feeling me so those are some of the things that i actually do in my business now another thing like stakeholders can help you is that in days maybe you are you are unreachable so for instance let me say um all the payments that was made in the store that day was made from was made by pos right and they urgently need cash for something and you're they can't reach you um you're out of service or maybe you you're on a flight somewhere with your family or you're going on holiday and they're in urgent need of cash they can quickly call a friend <coughs> of the business and i know what i'm saying a friend of the business they can call they don't even need to call family it can just be someone like some i have a really good friend that will work in the same office complex and i know that my staff calls out all the time when you're in the fix they know that my relationship with that person is so good that worst case scenario when i'm back or when i'm back in connection they can tell me to oh man we borrowed thirty thousand naira from this person or we lent forty thousand naira cash from this person or just one thousand five please your own missus or mister so so and so and so this amount do you get to so ensure that before you leave nigeria before you leave your home country you have great relationships with these people yes just sequel to the point about you know having a good relationship with your stakeholders i want you to create an atmosphere that loyalty can thrive in the sense that don't be a cheapskate like i find that a lot of um employers in nigeria especially with small businesses they pay their sales rep their phone operators literally below minimum wage and i think that's a bit unfair if you want a certain level of expectation and excellence for someone if your business can afford it if your business thrives enough that you can actually move out of the country and you still want it to function then you can afford to pay someone well now i'm not saying i should pay them like outrageously for something that they are not doing but pay them in such a way that even you you're content you know that you're paying them good and another person can just come and poach them you don't only pay them if you can pay for their internet bills every month because they'll be having a lot of correspondences with you know say by whatsapp by email do that and this is besides your company's wi-fi or your office's wi-fi or your store's wi-fi if you can give them even if you just two thousand every month for internet data you give them money to you 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 actually load the phones you load the store phones with um airtime which you can do from anywhere in the world really you can do that. Create an atmosphere where your staff are loyal to you. Where for them to lie to you, that means they're, they're probably in a fix. You wouldn't even create an opportunity. There'll be nothing to lie about. Do you understand what I'm saying? So create an atmosphere that people can love you. Create an atmosphere where they'll be happy working with the business. Create an atmosphere that even when they are disgruntled, they are able to share their opinions with you. They can send you a mail saying, this is what happened today. They, were not, they didn't really appreciate how they were treated. I know that that's really not the norm for Nigerian businesses, but trust me, when you have a business where your staff feels like you're genuinely, genuinely interested in their growth, you would see that they would put that same level of effort in fact they'll go beyond and out of their way just to ensure that your business runs well you did another thing obviously i would like to say is um have like a float for your business like what i i started accounting and i, I said i said this all the time for those that don't know I'll put the meaning of a float here it's just that they don't need to always ask you for you need money to run a business you need money to do things like obviously nigeria has gotten a lot easier you can pay your light bills online you can pay your internet bills online now so you don't need to do um you don't need to go through that stress but for other things for other sundry expenses ensure that you dedicate an amount of money per month like cash flow per month that your staff has access to now this doesn't need to be cash it can be sent to one of them's bank accounts it can be put in the care of another stakeholder it can be you know, it can be anything you can you can even do it in such a way that um they use their own money and then at the end of each day you refund them based on the receipts so everywhere they go to they get receipts if you maybe like you have a rider you have your own bike you don't need to give them cash to buy fuel from filling stations like i know that orando total and another filling station they do this riders card that you can actually put money on the card and then when they go to the filling station they can actually buy with that and then you can see how much they buy per day on your computer when you log into your portal for the company before the second to the final point i'm going to talk about is obviously try to eliminate cash as much as possible people will be like ah oh, just that's the hard part if you're a business and you don't have company accounts you're a joker if you're a business and you don't have a pos terminal you're a joker if you're a business and you don't do bank transfers you're a joker especially in nigeria you ensure that you want to eliminate cash as much as possible now in this era where there's a lot of counterfeit notes there's a lot of scam you want to ensure that even with bank transfers and payments you want to be sure that it's on it's where necessary in fact you can have a cap that any purchases above fifteen thousand or twenty thousand that means you're trying to avert the risk must be done by bank you know or like by point of sale and you teach your staff well they will ensure that the point of sale terminal when it um 
when the payment or the paper rolls out, it shows that payment authorized or payment approved. It doesn't show declined. You know, you have to ensure that your staff, they're very alert as well. So you want to ensure that your limits cash as much as possible. If you have a good relationship with your customers, let's say they buy a lot from you from Instagram, you know, let them know that you'd rather prefer them to send you the money instead of handing over cash to your staff. Not like you don't trust your staff, but you don't want to put you don't want to put them in a position where maybe someone steals it from them or when they are going home they were robbed. Another thing what we do in my own business is that when every day by three o'clock, even if whatever sale they made, even if it's one thousand five hundred naira, they go to the bank to deposit it if it's cash payments. Like every day by three o'clock, whatever money it's made by the end of business day, they don't take it home. They lock it in the store, and they, the next day when they, before the start of work, they go actually and they de deposit it in the bank. And I want I must see the credit alert. They must let me know. If they don't, I remind them. And this takes me to my next topic. Ensure that their KPIs, their key performance indicators, there's clear reprimands. Everyone knows that they have a strike. After strike one and two, they get a deduction. Like for instance, when I first moved, I had a staff that was very restless. And when I say restless, she made a lot of mistakes. She used to cost me money by just rectifying her mistakes. So we had a deal like, you know what, fine, you're just learning on the job. When you make the second mistake, whatever financial implication that will cost us, it will be deducted from her salary. And I wasn't going to play good cop or bad cop, I was going to deduct it from her salary. Yeah, so let them have a clear picture that they know that so they are more meticulous, they're not thinking about their family problems while they are at work. Like if they don't like their, their job, they should quit. It's rather, I'd rather you close your store than to lose money. So ensure that everyone has a clear, every person working with you has a clear picture of what the reprimands are. Not like you now let me say they don't come to work in a specific day you then now punish them and they're like ah oh, but my didn't tell me that that was a consequence no from their interview day that's why for me personally when i'm interviewing stuff it's not just the oh i like you drop your cv nope you drop your cv i call your previous employer i know where you're living i go to your house i ensure that i let you know that any theft that is done you are arrested you will be locked up you will go to jail it's not a like Obviously, they are pardonable, like, like, um, the pardonable offenses, but they need to know. I'm not saying it's still fair to them, but ensure that you put things that you would be able to follow through as well. Do you understand? So, like for instance, when I went to Nigeria, one of the interviews that I did, I spoke to one of the interview interviewees, if that's the right word, and I asked her where she worked before, based on her CV. She told me about the place. I said, why did she leave? She said that she was being owed salary, so she had to leave. So I felt a bit compassionate, but the least we told me, you know what, just call this person, call the former employer. So I went online, I didn't use the number that she gave me that I went online. Now it's such a small world these days, it's so easy to get people's numbers. If they say they worked at XYZ, go on Google, go on Instagram, XYZ will definitely have some link. And I found the employer's number and I called the employer and such a small world, she's actually someone that I've actually met before. And she told me that the girl is lovely, she's good, but the reason why she actually let her go was because she was boycotting her. Now it's a, it was a cosmetic business and she said the lady was actually going behind her back to like poach her customers, mixing her own concussion creams and you know, using the employer's labeling and packaging to sell her own homemade mixtures. Do you understand? So that was actually not just theft, it was actually fraudulent behavior. That's why she actually was sacked, not because she was owed salary. So, I didn't, and I didn't think the person would have come up with such a fake story. And when I asked the other person that brought her, that one said it's possible that it was true. So you also, you, you as an employer need to do your due diligence. Now the final point I'm going to talk about is now, you have to implement security measures. Now, it's going to cost you a lot. You're going to have to install CCTV cameras. And not just CCTV cameras, CCTV cameras that you can watch remotely. And not just that, you need to just in fact, every security measure that you can implement, implement it. If your business is an office, like where I used to work when I was um, um, employed in an organization, we actually had thumbprints. For us to access an office, we actually had to use thumbprints. I feel like the cost of integrating that is lesser than the cost of you trying to manage if there's theft or if you're exploited or if anything happens. So now CCTV cameras is not just even for catching people or whatever it's also also to instill some sort of awareness in your staff so when they know that you are actually watching them they are more careful you know or when even customers come in customers are pure fat if they know that it's written clearly on the door cctv camera in operation they will be a little bit more careful it's funny in nigeria when there's jungle justice and all that i'm not sure anyone will want to you know go out of their way to do something like that 
not like I endorse it, but people are more careful with things like that. So those are some of the tips that has been useful to me based on my own business. I'm sure obviously I'm not talking about everything that you need to know. I'm not your business owner. I'm not the CEO of your brand. I am not Jesus. I'm not an encyclopedia. I'm only talking based on what has worked and what I can tell you that. And I'm sure these tips would have helped you. So yeah, I wish you all the best as you're trying to make your business operate successfully while you're abroad. Do let me know what other additional points you think anyone watching this that is of interest can implement. Do let me know your thoughts, let me know your comments, let me know what you learned from this video especially, which of the points literally resonated with you. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and as always, make sure you share, you like, you comment, you subscribe. Yes? And yeah, I'll speak to you guys later. Bye-bye.